Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PlayStation 5 jailbreak video. So today we're going to be covering some updates to the YouTube jailbreak that have recently come out. Now several different updates from different developers here, so I'm just going to combine them all here into this one video. So starting with the release from the original developer Geji Ne here of a new release of the original project, YouTube jailbreak version 1.3. So this version seems to be more of a stability and code cleanup update here. As you can see, version 1.3 makes the Kill YouTube stable. It adds DLSYM offset prediction, makes PSN pop-up disable stable thanks to UFM42. It makes the YouTube two-second limit removal stable, which is also thanks to UFM42. And it also fixes the syscontrol by name bug. So a few fixes and stability improvements that have been added in this version. Now, of course, this is the original project where you have to send the payloads remotely. But if you want to install that version, you can either just restore the backup file or download the download zero.dat file and copy that over to the console's internal storage to update it. Now, alternatively, you can use the auto loader, which has also recently been updated to include the new change. But this one does say by default, the YouTube jailbreak auto loader version does not actually utilize the new kill youtube.l file to properly close the YouTube application from the upstream Y2JB project. If you experience stability issues with the current auto close method, you can manually add the kill youtube.l file as the final entry in your auto load configuration. So you would just add that payload as the last entry after all of the other payloads that you have set in your auto load text file in order to use the new payload to kill the YouTube application, which is used in the original project. But that's optional. You only need to do that if you're running into issues. So if you want to install the uh, autoloader project, you just download the YouTube jailbreak update.zip, put it on a USB drive. And then of course, when you run the YouTube jailbreak autoloader, it will update to that version, which is pretty straightforward. Now, in my case, I'm actually going to go with the original YouTube jailbreak project so that I can show you another development that has been made here, another way to autoload uh, the YouTube jailbreak using the original project. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and download the download zero.dat file for this version. I'll just use FTP on my console to copy it over. When you're running the ETA hen payload and you're connected to your local network on the console, it will run an FTP server in the background. And all you have to do is simply enter the PS5's IP address in the host box in an FTP client. And the port number is 1337 for ETA hens FTP. And that can connect you remotely to the console, which is the fastest way to copy files between your computer and your console. Of course, you can use PS5 Explorer with a USB drive to copy the files over if you prefer, but that is generally slower. So once we're connected to the console, we can go into the user folder and then the download folder. And then from there, we're looking for the title ID, which is PPSA01650, which is the YouTube app. And we go into that folder and we see the download.dat file. We just extract the download.dat file from the YouTube jailbreak project. And then we just simply copy that dat file over and wait for it to transfer. It's quite a large file, so it can take a while for that to copy over, especially on wireless. So just give that time to finish transferring, and then we should be good. Once it's done, we can reboot the console, and then when we run the YouTube application again, it should run the regular YouTube jailbreak with the remote loader instead of the auto loader version. Now, the reason why I'm setting this version up here is just to show you guys another development, which is, of course, the YouTube jailbreak web UI from NASCII. So this project gives you more control over how you load the payloads on the PS5, including an auto loader feature. Now, the way it works is that it runs a web server on some device on your local network. So I would recommend running this on maybe a Raspberry Pi or some kind of Arduino board that you can power from the console itself, or you can run it off your home server or NAS um, or your computer, I suppose. But generally, you'd rather have a device that's just on all the time running the web server. And then the idea is that it can then send the payloads to execute on the console and it has a web panel which makes it easy to swap out the payloads and an auto loader feature so that as soon as the console starts up and loads the YouTube jailbreak then this web server will send the necessary payloads to auto load so that it can be a completely hands-off experience if you want it to be but it gives you a little bit more control. So in order to set this up we're just going to go to the code and download it as a zip file. Then we can simply take this YouTube jailbreak web UI folder and extract that out somewhere on your device. And then if we open up this folder, we have an install script setup and run .bat for Windows or setup and run .sh, which you would run on a Linux based system. So because I'm on Windows, I'm just going to run the setup and run .bat file and we'll click run. 
and this will get the web server set up. It will also install any missing dependencies and so that it should be a hands-off installation because it will install anything that's missing for you. So it's now running the web server on your device and you can simply access the web panel via the device's local IP address with colon 8000 for the port number. If I hold down the control key and just click, that will go ahead and open up the web panel as you can see here. So this is the web panel. You just enter the PS5's IP address in the host box here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And we should be good to go. So you can see all of the payloads that are built in here. And the idea is that we run the YouTube jailbreak. So I'll just go ahead and try and, you know, fit this in. Maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller. And we'll bring up the console here so you can see side by side. So we're going to go ahead and launch the YouTube jailbreak, which is the standard YouTube jailbreak, not the auto loader. So now it's listening on the PS5's IP address on port 50,000. So I can just click the jailbreak button here and that should run the jailbreak. And there it goes. It's running the lapse kernel exploit. And then it closes the YouTube jailbreak. And this is using the new uh, version. So it has the proper kill YouTube payload in there. And now it's running case stuff because you can see in the payloads list, it is told to run case stuff there. So that is generally how it goes. It's also running FTP because we have the FTP server in there. So I guess it runs case stuff first, then in alphabetical order. So FTP, notify payload, and then shadow mount. And it's detected, uh, shadow mount's detected that I do have a game on my USB drive, which is Dead Space, and it has installed it there. So it's just gone through and ran all of those payloads one by one. Now, what's great about this is that you can also enable the auto jailbreak. So now I don't have to click the jailbreak button. I can just, you know, not even have this web panel open. And whenever I run the YouTube application on the console, as long as this web server is running on some device on the local network, it will send those payloads over and it will execute them one by one, just as it's done here. So I can be completely hands off with this if I want to, like the regular auto loader, except it's sending it over the network here for you. Now, the advantage of something like this for one, you have the option for select updates. So, you know, you can basically update any particular payload one by one here, which is great. And you can actually update the entire project itself from here. On top of that, you can add additional payloads. So for instance, uh, let's say the web server payload here. Let me just full screen this. So let's say I want to add the web server payload from John Turnblum's repo here. We can go ahead and find another payload. So here it is, web server PS5. If I want to add this payload, I can just right click and copy the link address of any payload that is on GitHub and then go back to the project here, paste in the URL and click download. And just like that, we now have the web server payload that's also available. And I can also load it on the fly as well. I don't have to wait till I reload the YouTube jailbreak because the elf loader is running in the background. So I can just click the load button here and it sends it directly over to the console. How cool is that? So. Yeah, definitely a handy project that has been released here by NASCII. NASCII always does some great web development work with the PS4 and is now bringing that forward to the PS5 as well, which is fantastic to see. It would be nice to have an option to um, disable certain payloads so that they are in the list, but they don't get loaded um, unless you like tick a box to tell it to load it when it runs the jailbreak. Because sometimes there are certain payloads you don't want to load as soon as you run the jailbreak. You might want to load them at a different time manually. Like the app dumper, for instance, you're not going to want to have that loaded when you load the jailbreak, but you're going to want to have that loaded whenever you want to dump a game. So it'd be nice to have an option to select only certain payloads that you want to load when you run the jailbreak and have other ones not load, but still be in the list so that you can load them manually whenever you want to. So hopefully we'll see something like that get added in a future release. But anyway, a fantastic project there by NASCII. So you have the option to use this instead of the auto loader, but if you'd prefer to use the auto loader, it has also been updated with the latest 1.3 version. So you can also install that one as well and uh, get that one updated too. So anyway, that's the general idea there. So the last thing that I wanted to cover here is a new update blocker. So this one is from Sven GDK, and this is meant to be a more complete update blocker for the YouTube jailbreak. We've had this issue for a long time with YouTube jailbreak, even with the current update blocker with that one database file that you can modify. The YouTube application can still get updated if you connect to the internet unprotected without any kind of DNS on there. That's why I normally say you use the DNS address of 127.0.0.2, which works and that blocks updates properly, but it also prevents domain names from being resolved, which effectively stops you from using applications like the Homebrew Store and other online features to download stuff. So that can be a problem. So if this works completely to block the updates, then you wouldn't need to necessarily use that DNS address. 
So that would be the general idea here. So with this one, you have to replace three different files. So modify three different files instead of just the one database file to properly block the application from being updated. So the first thing you want to do is head to the settings menu on your console and just keep your console in the settings menu. That makes it less likely that the databases are going to be written to while you're trying to replace them, which can cause issues. So then on our computer, we're just going to use FTP for quickness again. On the console, we're going to go into the system data directory, the priv directory, and then the MMS directory and copy out your app.db and your app info.db file over to your computer. Then we're going to go back to system data priv again. And this time we're going to go to the app meta folder and then PPSA 01650, the title ID for YouTube, and then copy the param.json file in there over to your computer. So these are the three files we need to replace. So first of all, we'll edit the param. We can just right click and edit this in notepad for quickness. And then we're simply going to find the content ID and change that to 99.999.999 as your content ID. And then down at the bottom, we should have the version file URI. And we're going to change that to HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.2. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and save that file. Now we can copy that param.json file back over to the same location, system data priv app meta. And there we go, that's it copied over. Now it also has another location we need to replace. So if we head back to the root directory, we also need to go to the user folder and then the app meta folder. And then the same thing, PPSA 01650, and then replace the param file in there with the same one that we copied out before. So we just replace that one and we should be good there. Next, we have the database files. So we need to head back to system data, priv, and then MMS, where our database files are, and we need to modify these two databases. So to do this, we're going to use an application called DB Browser for SQL Lite, which will be in the description. So I'm going to open up the folder and run the application. And then I'm simply going to copy the first file in the app info DB into this application. I can just drag and drop it or open database. Then we can go to the SQL section here to execute SQL. And I'm going to paste in this command here. Now, this is not the command that's actually in the GitHub post from Sven GDK. That one doesn't seem to work correctly. So I'm using this command instead to update it, which I'll leave in the description. So we paste that in and we click the little play button to execute the SQL. And you can see that has been completed successfully. At which point you can then click the button to write changes to the database and then close the database. And then at that point, we can then take the next database file app.db and drag that one in as well to the software. And then once that's loaded, we can do the same thing, head to the execute SQL. And this time we're going to use a different SQL command, the one from the post from Sven GDK, which is the bottom one here. And we're just going to copy this one and paste it into the execute SQL, click the play button to execute it. And that should execute that command. And once that's done, we can go ahead and simply do the same thing, write changes to save it and close the database. And that is it. So once we're done that, we can copy these files back over to the console. And that should apply the update blocker. So now whenever we run the YouTube jailbreak, it should be properly blocked, meaning that we don't necessarily have to worry about constantly having that DNS server of 127.0.0.2 on our DNS. In my case, I've gone to my network settings here and just set it back to automatic. And after trying YouTube jailbreak many different times, I haven't had a single issue on my 4.03 system. However, after testing extensively on my 10.01 console, I have not had the issue where the YouTube jailbreak has been updated and I've had to reinstall it. That has not happened. But what I have had happen sometimes is I get the normal uh, YouTube splash screen showing up sometimes when I try to load it. And that does interrupt the exploit, the user land exploit. Normally, I can just close the application and then load it again. And then on the second or third attempt, it will load properly but you might want to keep that uh, 127.0.0.2 DNS if you do run into that issue. But the good news is that you can use the online features without having to worry about it being automatically updated. So you can always go back to connecting to the internet to use the homebrew store or any online features for as long as you want without having to worry about it. And then you can switch the DNS back to 127.0.0.2 when you want to run the exploit to prevent that splash screen from appearing. So that is the general idea. So we've got an improved update blocker we have the uh, YouTube jailbreak web UI from NASCII and we have an update to the actual main project itself and the YouTube auto loader uh, with some stability improvements and code cleanup. 
So that is what we've got there with the YouTube jailbreak. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.